What is good, y'all? It's Mark Turner, Turn to Fitness at 5.22 a.m. I got a QA and a of the day, and this is a question that I've been getting a lot of, and I've heard this a lot, and I want to answer this question, and I want to give this to you in six steps. Three good things and three bad things about diet. Before we get started, stay blessed. No excuses. Seek advice from a professional. If you want dietitian information, there are several dietitians out there, but I definitely want to give you my facts and opinions about why most people fail when it comes to their diet and the three things that you can do to win at your dieting and the three things that's going to prevent you from winning at your diet. Dieting. <laughs> the three things that will prevent you from winning at your dieting. Before we get started, you already know what time it is, so let's go. <laughs> What is good? More Turner Turned Up Fitness Q&A of today. Q&A of today is a very easy question. Hopefully I can answer this question for anybody that, that's out there thinking about dieting. Is dieting necessary when it comes to weight loss? I'm going to give you an answer that is broken down into six steps, three good, three bad things. Okay, so let's start with the bad things first. The bad things you need to understand when it comes to dieting is this. Dieting is this. Fad diets. Fad diets are one of the biggest problems when it comes to weight loss. And what happens is they have restrictive um, criteria for you to follow. And a reason why I know this to be a fact, here's the information. Um, I had a client, Miss Gail, awesome, awesome client. Um, she actually tried one of these fad diets. And what ended up happening in her case was the diet was not specify for her she was following another program when it came to a diet program and it wasn't specified for her and because it wasn't specified for her she wasn't consuming enough calories that's the first thing fad diets the second thing is this people eating too little now here's the thing about eating let's just change it up instead of saying eating too little not eating enough so where where i'm going with this one is i get clients in that asks the question, if I reduce my um, overall meal intake, will it help me? Um, really, it depends on what it is that you're consuming in the first place, and it's depending on how many calories you're consuming in a day. Um, the problem with most people is when they start dieting, they they think they could just stop eating certain, just eating meals all together, maybe eat one big meal. That's a big mistake, real big mistake, and the reason why is you're consuming most people consume massive calories in one meal. Let me give you an example. I had a client, I'm not going to say his name because I haven't got permission to say his name on video. Um, I had a client about three years ago. He came in, you know, looking for a trainer, uh, started talking with him and asked him what his um, routine was when it came to eating. His routine was, this is crazy. Um, he ate uh, McDonald's for lunch and he always had a big lunch, but he never ate dinner and he never ate breakfast. Here's what the lunch, this is what the lunch, this is what the lunch consisted of. It consisted of two Big Macs, two large fries, a large shake, a large soda, and two apple pies. That was his meal for the whole day. And his assumption was because he ate that type of meal once a day, that he didn't have to eat anything else throughout the day. Now, first of all, you already understand what I'm going with this, right? So the first problem with that is this, it's McDonald's, okay? A lot of people don't know that if you go if you go to McDonald's, which I'm pretty sure I don't think McDonald's will let you in the building right now, but you can go on their website or somewhere you can find information. Normally in a McDonald's, on the left side of the menu board, there's a nutritional guide, or they ask they say that you can ask for a nutritional guide. And they do have a nutritional guide in here. And I think I did a video about this a while back. This probably last year. But they have a nutritional guide available for you to ask them. Can you look at it and look at what you're consuming? Because what's crazy is this. The information they put on the board, the information on the board is not very accurate, but the book is. Now, I'm not trying to find the numbers right now for you. I can, I probably can give you a link or somewhere in the description. But to consume that many calories, I'm going to be honest with you, from my mindset, that has to be clearly over 8,000 to 9,000 calories in one setting. Now, he ate everything. So, what we did to change his mindset and to change his way of thinking about food is first of all, I told him, get away. I said, if you can't get away from McDonald's completely, at least do me this favor. Don't consume the whole meal at one time. Break down the meals throughout the day. 
So we what we end up doing, we looked at his total scheduling for the day, from the time he gets up, the time he goes to work, the time he goes to bed. And we just change things slowly. That's the one thing about me as a coach. I don't put you on a crash diet um, or try to, I'm, I'm, my goal is to wing you off the bad habits. That's what I want to do, wing you off the bad habits. So what we had to do in this case was to get rid of the sodas, we got rid of the um, milkshakes, and we started doing, using water instead. That started helping out a lot. Then we started to change the way he looked at his meals. I was like, dude, if you're going to eat McDonald's, at least go for the grilled chicken sandwich and not the Big Macs. And don't do the fries. Get away from the fries. Get some, uh, they got sliced apples and stuff like that. Now, I know for a lot of people, they're like, that's too much. Well, in his case, when he walked through the door, he was weighing, I think he's about six foot two. And he was weighing close to 300 something plus pounds. By the time we finished, he was down to, I'm going to say about two. The last time we talked, I haven't talked to him in a while. The last time we talked, he was down to 245 pounds. Now, that took time. That took a lot of time. And here's where we're going to go into the next part of this. The third thing that a lot of people have problems with when it comes to dieting, the things that help them, the, the things that cause them to lose when it comes to dieting is this. Counting calories. Now, let me let me explain to you about counting calories. It's, to me, is this. I, I try to keep it stupid simple. Um... You have a lot of dietitians that now if you want to do the counter the calorie count, that's fine. They have apps, they have tools for that. I tell I always encourage my clients to know exactly what their caloric intake is because it kind of gives them an idea of what type of foods they should be eating, how much they can eat. Because if you go to like a vegetable-based diet, you probably can eat way more than you can eat when it comes to a meat-based diet. But when it comes to counting calories, what you need to understand is this. You have your kilo calories, you have regular calories, okay? The kilo calories is what it takes to burn off fat, and then your regular calories is what you consume. A lot of people, they look at the the federal guidelines when it comes to dieting and nutrition, and it says specifically 2,000 calories recommended, but it's, it's just a recommendation. You don't have to consume 2,000 calories every single day. That's, this is throughout, hold on, make sure I get you right on this. Some people get it wrong. They say 2,000 calories. They're thinking 2,000 calories per meal. That's not right. 2,000 calories per day. What you really need to understand is this. Take the time to look at what you're, what you're consuming. The best way to do calculation, if you're going to do calorie counting, is doing it this way. Understand that it takes about 3,500 calories to burn off a pound of fat, okay? So if you're consuming 3,500 calories a day, that means you're putting on, and, and no, listen, with no exercise and no activity, that means you're probably putting on about a pound of fat a day. In order for us to take you on a safer journey, for you to lose weight, what you have to do is think like this. So if I'm taking in, let's just, um, let me change that number because that's so unrealistic. And I mean, no, it's not unrealistic. It can be done if you want to consume 3,500 calories a day, but let's go back to the federal guidelines. 2,000 calories a day, okay? That means in a week's time frame, seven days, you're consuming 14,000 calories. In order for us to get a pound of fat off of you in a week, we need to break that down. Let's say this, instead of you consuming 2,000 calories a day, let's break it down to 1,500 calories a day. So now, if you do the math, what we're looking at is this. 3,500 calories are being deducted from your total intake for the whole week. That's one pound of fat that you can lose a week. You can, I think this from what I've studied and what I know, and I'm not doing, I'm not saying this to you for you to go do this. Now, some people have wanted to lose more weight faster. Anything you do to lose weight faster, it may not be safe, but I will say this. One pound to 1.5 to two pounds a week is a safe way to lose weight. So that means if you want to lose two pounds a week, that means you have to cut your caloric intake per day from 2,000 calories down to 1,000 calories. Okay, well, let's take, let's take that back. If I told you 2,000 calories and we're taking off 500, 1,500 calories, 3,500 calories, if we take off an additional 500 calories, that's why I went back. I want to make sure I explain this to you the right way. 1,000 calories that's going to take off how many calories per week? Think about it, 35 times two is what? 7,000 calories. We could probably lose about two pounds a week. But the problem is, it's all about activity levels. Those are the three things that can stop you from losing weight. Counting calories, diets that are fad at the time, and what's the last thing we said? What was the last thing we said? One of the tools that I like to use with my clients is called Eat This Much. Eat This Much is a great tool. I put a little, um, 
picture of the logo right here in the description or right here on the screen and then i give you a link in the description about eat eat this much eat this much is basically you you're setting the, the tone for your clients or they set the tone for themselves so all i do most of the time with that particular app all i do is this when i get a new client i ask them what they prefer to eat what do they like to eat i want to know what they're eating right now because the goal is to not take away the things they like we want to show them how to eat it better like they want pizza there's other ways you can do pizza there's ways you can consume your calories on a better format than what you've currently been doing especially if you don't know how to do these things now let's get into the things that can help you lose weight here we go so now to to get you on the right track now i said three but two there's actually four things that can help you but i'm going to combine two of them together because that'll make it three to make it easier on you to pay attention to the video <laughs> so one of the things you got to understand is doability is it doable for you is, is it a diet that you can sustain and maintain now the reason i'm saying that is because some people they'll get on a diet plan such as the ketogenic diet or they'll do the paleo diet or atkins diet or the whatever kind of diet they wanted the cookie diet whatever the thing is is it doable for you is it something that you can stay on board with is it something that's cost effective towards you now if you do meal prep and you do meal plan you can save a lot of money but you need to make sure that the plan is doable for you and it's something that you can do on your own after you've been taught but it's got to be something that you can sustain and you can maintain in order to lose weight here's the next thing that can help you on your weight loss and fitness journey the next thing that can help you this is really important this is really important it's choosing the right diet this goes in conjunction with the last one i just said choosing the right diet means is the diet something that you look at and it has everything you need from all the food groups and is it going to help you understand that if i take in this food will it be enough for me you have to find that diet that's perfect for you now the best way to do it is you need to just look at the guidelines look at the information that's provided for you and this is coming from the coach and the trainer of course um and look at though look at not just taking on the advice but let's say for instance if i have a client that was normally consuming 3500 calories and we say something like this we're going to drop you down to 1700 calories a day now in the mind that person may think that's not going to be enough food but once you show them how to coach to the client once you show them how to prep the food and consume the food properly it may be enough food for that person here's the problem here's what, what happens most people that have never been on a nutrition plan or a diet they assume that it's not going to be enough food but the problem is you have to know how to stack the meals we need to satiate the body we need to satisfy the body's urge to snack and eat all day that's another thing don't snack a lot okay but you got to learn how to satiate your body so that you could function throughout the day and that's why you want to find a diet that works for you you want to make sure it's doable we said that before diets that are doable <laughs> diets that are doable and that help you win and don't make you feel like you're going to be restricted here's the next thing that you got to deal with when it comes to your weight loss journey and how you're going to win it's the third thing right here the third thing we almost done the right nutrition and calorie levels now here's where it comes down to play the right nutrition and calorie levels now here's the thing what a lot of people don't understand we, we said before previously are the things that, that that won't help you we want to get you enough calories in where you can start losing between one to two pounds a week. That's literally either four to eight pounds a month. Now, here's the thing. You got to understand this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. And a lot of people, every, this is, let me, let me give you another perspective. Every country is different. Every, every family is different. If you're eating a certain amount of calories a day, and you want to lose the weight, but you don't stay on track with what you're supposed to do, you're not going to lose the weight. First of all, you need to have activity with it also. There's three things you got to add with it. You got to have the activity levels, you got to have the food, and you got to have a mental, the mental readiness to do this type of stuff, okay? Cardio, you need... All right, so the right nutrition and the right calorie intake now let me let me break this down with you on the nutrition this is going to be very interesting I, i've been reading a lot of books recently and i read a lot of online books also just taking like i don't really go through the entire book what i do is when i see a subject that very that's very interesting or important to me it gives me an idea of how to explain this information to you so when we talk about the right nutrition what we're talking about is 
is it something or is it a, a plan that I feel or you feel or the coach and you feel if you're putting the plan together properly that you can sustain it and it's going to give you exactly what you need in order to, order to win. Now, there are some diets out there that I've had a lot of questions about in the past. But the thing is, if you're feeling that it's not going to give you enough nutrition, especially when you start the workout program and you start to ramp up the, um, the activity levels, you have to adjust, okay? This is the thing you have to do. You have to be willing to adjust. Not just you. The coach needs to adjust the plans with you. But this comes from communication, okay? These are the ways you're going to win when it comes to your health and wellness goals, okay? So we just talked about a bunch of stuff. And I know it's a lot of information. And it came out real fast. Understand this. Make sure when you do go on a diet or you're doing your nutrition planning, it's a doable, it's a doable diet. Make sure it's sustainable. Make sure you're getting the proper nutrition and the proper calories. And make sure you got activity levels that back that up. Now, like I said before, there are things you don't want to do. Don't mess with no fad diets. I'm telling you, the fad diets are just for that particular time. Don't mess with um don't 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 backslide. That's the main thing. Don't backslide. Once you start the journey, stay on track with the journey. If you have questions, ask your coach to help you. That's, that's their goal. Their goal is to be, to hold you accountable and you as a person should hold them accountable as well if you feel like you're not getting what you need, okay? I've been through that process. Nobody's perfect. Believe me, I've done it and I've failed and I'm learning from it every day because if I can't give a client what they need, that means I'm not doing my job. And the goal is to help these people win. And my goal as a coach and personal trainer is to help those that are willing to help themselves get in the best shape of optimized health for 2020 and beyond. I know this is a long ass Q and A, but it's some answers and some questions out there that are very, very, very important to a lot of people. And a lot of people may not want to ask those questions because they may feel embarrassed. But you never have to feel embarrassed by asking questions, turn to fitness, more trying to turn to fitness. You're correct to exercise health and especially helping those willing to help themselves get in the best shape and optimize health for 2020 and beyond. Stay blessed. Stay turned up. We'll talk very soon. Hey, before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the information that I'm providing for you on a daily basis. Be safe out there. We are not out of the woods yet, but hopefully we'll be out soon. We'll talk.